progress through the breast, we can see that... The London Development Agency is at the forefront of helping innovation in the UK capital. They're one of nine regional bodies spearheading a drive to get more small and medium-sized companies to innovate. It's part of an ongoing programme to encourage this type of forward thinking for business in the UK capital. We have uh, several different initiatives. We have innovation centres which offer um, premises for businesses, um, especially start-up, and they get general support there as well from the people that run the centres. Um, we have business support initiatives that are innovation specific and within those there are also grants for the companies to get to undertake innovation. This could be working with the knowledge base such as a university to access their expertise and we offer some subsidy towards that and that could be developing a new product, process or service. Where I work in innovation it can be any business that can innovate. We don't discriminate and just support one specific business. And what we like to do with those is to really, really take them from where they are and make them think about where they could be. Um, when you have just an individual or two, three, four men com company, then they're working really hard just to do the day-to-day -day business. And we're trying to get the message of what innovation could do for them and how it's important for them to make time for innovation um, so that they can grow and uh, compete really with all the other companies that are out there. One area they're helping develop new technology is for breast cancer screening. At the Princess Grace Hospital in London, they're using digital two-dimensional imaging to look for signs of breast cancer. Although effective, it does have some drawbacks. Digital mammography records the image in a completely different way to the standard analog mammography and it's been in use in this centre now, we were the first in the country eight years ago. And what it gives you is the ability to manipulate the image once you have taken your standard x-ray. You record the image electronically which then allows you to manipulate the image, enhance the contrast, magnify it and get more information from the image that you've taken. It enables you to find more cancers in women with denser breasts and in particular the younger women who have denser breasts it has been shown to find significantly more cancers. Mammography at the moment is the single best screening method for breast cancer and it's the only one that's been shown indubitably in population screening to reduce your chance of dying from breast cancer. It's not perfect, it has limitations. One of the limitations being tissue structures in the breast can overlap each other and you, you might not be able to see through dense breast tissue. To improve this type of technology, Dexella have been developing the software for 3D imaging for breast cancer screening. They've been in business since 2005 with the help of the LDA and are currently refining their imaging system. With our system we obtain three-dimensional imaging of the breast and that allows the doctor to peel back the layers of breast tissue and see a structure that may be hidden and concealed behind other layers of tissue. Uh, and that both allows uh, the doctor to see a tumour that um, she may otherwise have missed and also it allows her to rule out um, a callback that might otherwise have been made. She's able to look through uh, the breast and a suspicious area um, may become clearer in three dimensions. Dexella has developed um, new uh, imaging geometries to be able to capture three-dimensional data at a low x-ray dose and it's essential that um, low dose be used for screening because these are healthy women who are being imaged and you can't give them high doses of ionizing radiation for fear of causing cancer. Um, so we are operating within the, uh, the dose budget of um, 2D mammography but creating a 3D image uh, for, the, for the doctor and that's done using um, advanced algorithms um, that have come out of the world of um, electron microscopy and um, x-ray crystallography out of sort of scientific imaging. Staff at the Princess Grace Hospital in London believe that 3D imaging will help provide them and patients with a better chance of identifying and treating breast cancer early. Relax that shoulder down. 
Tomosynthesis, which is the basis of three-dimensional imaging, allows you, using a platform of digital mammography uh, technology, to perform little slices or recreate little slices of a millimetre thick through the breast tissue, uh, rather like computed tomography but in the breast. Now what that means of course is that you can have the potential to reduce these confusing overlapping images because basically you're taking very thin slices through the breast. So if there's a cancer there, you're in a much better position to be able to see it. Likewise, in dense breast tissue where you're having trouble seeing through the breast perfectly, again, because you're taking smaller slices, you can see each detail much clearer. Then, of course, it has the ability to put all those slices together to recreate a three-dimensional image. And if you have a tumour in the breast or if you have other benign masses in the breast, that enables you to then uh, provide a better spatial delineation of where they all are in relation to each other. This is very exciting uh, potential technology to enable us to perform either better screening tests, you know, in a screening situation it might be feasible to find more cancers using this technology, also um, in a woman who has a known abnormality because we can get more imaging detail it has the potential to allow us better management planning for her treatment. Another company innovating in London is FACET, run by Bruce Bell and his partner Nick Wilson. They're architects who are developing a new digital method to cut and construct buildings and structures using computer-controlled machines. Normally an architect would do um, detailed computer drawings of the building very accurately. He'd then give that information to the builder who would then build it by hand. He would look at the drawings, measure out and then go and uh, construct it on site. Whereas if you look at the manufacturing industry, um, if you look at something like a mobile phone, it's all computer designed, there's a 3D model of every component. That, that model is then translated directly into a physical thing uh, and directly into the production line. There's no kind of manual interpretation of it. Um, so the, the result is that you get a much higher quality of product in that it's digitally produced. So we're taking the same kind of basic fundamental ideas of that. How do you produce buildings digitally? How do you get computer information directly onto the building site? We take the computer model, break it down into components. Those components are then cut on the computer controlled machine. Then the components yeah, fit together, you know, 0.2 of mil accuracy, slot together, and then we, we assemble it like big blocks of Lego essentially on site. Up to 50% of materials are wasted on site when you're building. You know, the, if, for example, if you get a, a, someone to for example, cut a piece of plywood, it's very difficult to do it efficiently. If you're doing it by hand, you know, if you need a piece of wood this big, you tend to kind of cut it in half and then cut that into quarter. And then, you know, whereas in this case, you, you can be incredibly efficient with what you can fit on a sheet, a sheet, you know, you can pack all the components very close together and the machine cuts them out absolutely accurately for you. So you've got that kind of efficiency going on where the, the amount of waste is a lot less. In this industrial unit, they put together what will become an office space and showroom. It's been constructed in record time because it simply slots together. They now have more ambitious plans to use this type of technology to build new timber framed homes. Say you're going to build a close of 20 houses and you had type ABC. We could type, for a developer, we could design type ABC, have type ABC stair, kitchen, floor, finishes, everything. So there's a palette of materials that the developer said, I have one of those, one of those, that kitchen, that door, that stair. Have a close of houses and then the machine is installed on site, the wood product comes in one end, goes to the machine, comes out and is assembled on site. So you can build up a set of houses really quickly by using one machine that just comes and pumps in. So say you did the floor boxes all in one go, the machine cut, cuts them all out, you've got a team of guys assembling them. So the houses have got quite quick, but also you could have bespoke different products. So if you did a normal prefabric house, you might have big containers that come and you're limited to the size of the containers. So all the houses look the same and they're just racked up like you know, shipping containers or prefabricated big sheets. Whereas this, you've got more flexibility to make the house, you know, one bed, one bed house, three bed house, four bed house, two stories, three stories. So it, it does open up a lot of flexibility and a lot more play for, I think, for architects. So we sort of move it's this type of innovative thinking so. that the London Development Agency is backing, allowing companies and inventors to have the time, space, finance and expertise to develop new ideas and to ensure London becomes a hub for business innovation.